Welcome back, all of you great talks. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show, and I hope that you guys are still learning a whole lot more. We are on Facebook. That is where you can simply find us. Let us know anything. If you guys have any, any other ex extra questions, let us know. That is www.facebook.com forward slash Mindset TV. And just like Vanessa, who was our caller before all of this had, before this ad break, we had some technical issues, but it was all sorted out. You can also do the same. Just like a, send you your questions at questions at learn.co.za. And before the ad break, they were all busy with Vanessa's question, but we are short with, I think. Just one. Just one, just part one question. Yeah. So we're going to continue from that question. Tracy? Yeah, great. Thank you. Guys, we really love talking to you. It's so nice having that feedback. And I think it's really important for other people to, to hear how you guys think. Because, you know, sometimes we don't always, like I know because I've been doing it for so long, I forget how you guys think through things. So it's nice to hear how you think through things. And maybe I can explain things in a slightly different way. So please don't get put off by technical issues sometimes, you know, it happens, but we really want to talk to you. So please let us talk to you. Now, we got our answer. We got a minus. Please, 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 with work, you don't change the minus. You leave it as a minus, okay? That is quite important. It just is showing us which direction the force is actually being applied. To, applied. So don't stress about it. But the last question here is that... They ask you, what is the average power delivered by the motor if it takes five minutes to lower the crate to the bottom of the ramp? Now, that question is really nice. My first thought whenever I see that is to go, can I use this? Now, sorry, that should be the average. Now, the problem with using this equation, please be careful, grade 12s, you can only use this equation if your velocity is constant, your velocity was not constant for this equation, okay? Your velocity increased. There was a change in kinetic energy, so I know I can't use that. But in the question before, they asked us to work out the work done by the motor. That means I can use the equation P equals W over T. I know W, it's 21,000, I think I left, yeah, 21,151, okay, so I know that's 21,151,45, but they said it was five minutes, five minutes must be converted to seconds, so it's five times 60, so I'm going to take my answer, my 211, 51.45 and divided by 5 times 60 or 300 and it gives me 70,50. 70, 70,50 watts. Power we make positive, okay, so we change the negative and make it into a positive. We're all very happy with that, okay. That was a great question. I know it took us a while, but you know what, that's okay. It's what will happen in your exams. So, Let's go to, we have another question here. This is a really nice question because it's a velocity time graph. I'm not going to have time to do all of it. Okay, what I don't finish, I'm hoping maybe we can finish on Monday because we live again Monday at 6 o'clock. Yeah, for science. So don't stress about it. But I want to actually explain the graph to you. They give you a velocity graph that, that shows the motion of a ball that is thrown upwards from a balcony of a building. So they're saying to you, you have a building, the object is thrown upwards, it takes 0.5 seconds for the ball to reach the highest point above the balcony, after which time it falls past the balcony and strikes the floor. Okay, so now it goes up and it gets down, hits the floor, and that little part was 0.5 seconds. Now, if you look at this graph... Before we do anything else, you have to recognize that a graph like this is telling me which direction to use as positive. You do not have a choice here. My graph starts at minus 4,9. The question said that I threw it up first. That means they're telling you that the upward direction is negative. That means 
down is positive and you must use down as positive. If you change that, so somewhere in the question, when you do a question, if you change that and you decide now that up is positive, they will mark your substitution wrong because you had a graph. They are telling you which direction is positive. You cannot change that. Be very, very careful. Now, first question. State the numeric value of the gradient of the graph. All right, so what does the gradient of a velocity time graph give us? You need to know this. Gradient always gives us acceleration. Now, this is vertical projectile motion. So, it's free fall motion. That means it's only falling under the force of gravity. And what do we know about the, the value of acceleration due to gravity? It's 9,8 meters per second squared. I'm not going to get that unit wrong. Give a reason for your answer. Well, it's in free fall. It's in free fall. If it's in free fall, it only accelerates at the force of gravity. So it's got to be 9,8. Okay? Brilliant. What is the time T1 shown on your graph? Now, I like this. Watch here. Minus 4,9 plus 4,9. That means it's gone up, reached the top, come back down, and actually at that 4,9, this is what they want you to recognize, is that it's reached the height of the building. This is the 4,9 meters per second going up. This is the 4,9 meters per second coming down. It's in the same position it started at. You need to recognize, because acceleration is constant, that the time it takes to get up is the time it get, takes to come down. So if this little distance was 0,5, this distance is also 0,5, and 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1. So my value over here is 1 second. Okay, now use only, only the graph and not... Equations of motion to determine the maximum height the ball reaches above the balcony. So, we look at this and we go, I cannot use equations of motion. Brilliant. I have to use the graph. It got to maximum height over here. To get the gradient, so what to remember, gradient of the graph gives me acceleration. Area gives me displacement. That means I need to calculate that area. Okay, so now I say my delta y equals my area under the graph. This happens to be a triangle, so that means it's a half base times height. So it's a half, my base is 0 0.5, my height minus 4,9. Okay, we use it as it is, so it's 0 0.5 times 0.5, so half times half times 4.9, and it is minus, I know that, so it's minus, I'm just going to use all the values, but they wanted the heights above the building, it's negative, that makes sense, because up was the negative direction, down was my positive direction, so that means it's 1,225 meters above above the balcony. Okay, now there's a couple more questions to this, but I have so run out of time, because now it's time to do, I think, math literacy mm -hmm. is next. Brilliant, because yes. as you can see, there's actually a whole bunch more to do with this. But you know what? I think what we'll do, we'll keep them. They're nice questions, guys. I promise I will finish these on Monday for you. And no then do you, we've, got, we've got some other really good questions as well that people sent in, but we'll definitely finish those on Monday. And now it's time for me to go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shesha, for coming through. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for participating on the show. From me, Tracy, everybody in studio would like to say bye for now until next time.